Hey kids, so we have uh, yet another update on the 1980 Gretsch Alamore Randy Tucker drum set, which is now mine. So the floor tom um, and in a few of the other videos, I stripped the clear coat off. That's easy to do on old drums because most of them are lacquer. So all I do is take lacquer thinner and just let it sit on it with a damp rag, like saturate the rag and it'll take it right off. It comes off like almost like rubber. Um, and then you clean the whole shell up with um, a, a cloth. And then um, obviously you take all the hardware and all the parts off it. You just want the shell then um, I don't sand it because the finish like once you strip that thinner off it comes off super easy you can almost see it coming off and you can almost peel it off like dead skin so you wipe it all down again with another a clean rag of lacquer thinner which you can buy at any hardware store the problem is you can't buy the old-fashioned lacquer the actual clear coat itself that's the bummer so anyways uh, as you saw in the other pictures um, everything was stripped off and uh, was was uh, masked up so I masked put tape in all the holes so nothing bleeds through in the holes and I cover the inside of the shell to protect the inside of the shell which is Gretsch's um, silver sealer it's like a special formula I'm sure it's not, but it's probably just some type of regular silver paint, but you know, whatever, it helps seal the inside of the drum. So we put four coats of lacquer on it, and so you get a little bit of orange peel in it. So you, once it's dry, you want to, normally what I would do is I'd go two coats, then let it dry, and then scuff it with, uh, you know, like uh, even a, a 400 or a 600 grit uh, uh, water paper um, but I did just four coats because I wanted to maintain 40 years of use in comparison to the other drums because they're dinged and have marks and I don't want it mint I wanted a mint Gretsch drum set I would buy a brand new one so anyways so um, after the the um, what you call it um, the prepping and the masking then I wipe it down with this product which is I used to use this in the body shops I've got about three cans of it left I don't even know if they make it anymore but what this does is you saturate a nice cloth with it saturate a cloth and uh, after the shells all masked and ready for prepping painting I mean or clear coating you wipe the whole shell with it um, it won't harm it and what it does is it gets all the oil or wax deposits that were left on the shell gets rid of them so you don't have a chemical reaction when you spray the paint on top of it so this is the the lacquer I use um, this is my last can of it I don't know if they even make it anymore I used to have like tons of it but I've done so many projects this is the thinner uh, buy it a Canadian Tire. I mix it one to one. Um, easy way to do it is one of these sticks. So if you're mixing one to one, you go two parts lacquer and then add up to the four for the thinner. Pretty basic. Some of these are for three parts that have a hardener. This does not. Um, so as we saw in the, uh, I think it's part 14, the shell was sprayed. I didn't show the spraying. Um, I probably should have, but it's pretty straightforward. I use a spray gun. This is a siphon feed. I have gravity fed ones, but I kind of like doing clear coat with this one. Took 
to mask it and wipe it down to get with the uh, wash and wipe to get the wax and fingerprint oil off and to paint it, it, all, it everything took about half an hour and it was dry you know within 15 minutes of it so I let it sit overnight and then today what we did was um, wet sanded it and I used different grades as you can see here I let them soak in there and uh, I use this little rubber right here this little rubber thing squeegee wrap the paper around it so uh, and you just dunk it in that you don't soak the whole drum you just wherever you're standing um, you wet that pad and paper just a little bit and uh, get this light out of the way for a sec here and um, sand and you don't press hard you just kind of try and flatten that orange peel that kind of came out um, out of the lacquer from doing four coats normally you would sand between the coats and get a flat finish but I want this to look a little bit vintage where the wood is kind of starting to push out and change its shape it's gone through 40 years of playing and um, it's not a flat surface anymore all those other drums in this kit over here they are not perfect anymore and I, I don't want them that way so I had to try and imitate the the uh, the finish and it turned out good um, I did put a yellow tint in it like I mentioned in part 14 just to make the lacquer get a little bit darker uh, the coating so and so here's the finished product and uh, I think it turned out great um, it sounds great I'm trying to get the, the light to kind of shine on there you can see the wood grain uh, all these parts were taken off and cleaned um, we got a uh, white coated ambassador skin all of them are you got Remo skins and it's like I say a coated ambassador which is top center in the picture and uh, I got it from Long and McQuaid I'm surprised they actually had it because when I ordered my skins the last time it took two months for everything to come in so this being the most common snare drum ever, snare drum head ever made, I was like, uh, I was surprised they actually had it. Even though it's a floor tom, it's the same size as a snare. It's a 14. So this was a hanging floor tom before. You can see these two um, bolts are in there. Uh, they're plugging the original holes. It only had one of these up here um, so I bought three legs and the tom holders to make it into a floor tom so if somebody wanted to go back to the hanging floor tom for whatever reason you can leave the brackets on the bottom just tighten them up and they won't rattle take the legs off and uh, you can either find a a fourth one of these because it's 300 now you can find one of these put it up here or you can take this one off put it up here take the bolts up put it down there either way it's it's the option for both I didn't want to plug the holes normally I use a, a small wooden dowel and I'll plug the hole and glue it in and do a little body work but um, I like that option because it's a 14 it's a big big tom to kind of be hanging off the bass drum or you know so I don't know it's just uh, I love floor toms with legs so so it turned out really good I left any major dents which aren't many like there's a little a little dent right there from where the old bracket used to be and uh, a couple little dents around the drum they're almost impossible to see but if you rub your hand on it you might find one or two so yeah there's one right here 
Just a little bit of a ding there. So look at how great that looks. And we'll turn this into the light. So, so having that little mark on there just adds to the character. The badge is a little bit marked up. So just a little bit. Now I got I got to clean some of the wax off too. The chrome is near mint on on the lugs themselves on this drum. Same with the 18. That's that's because I bought them off of Randy Tucker 12 years ago, and they've been in storage ever since. The kit, unfortunately, has been played all that time, and uh, it's not as it's close, but it's got more marks on it than I would have liked. So, right now, all tuned up nice. So, floor toms 14 to 18 rather than a 16. Oops, I'm just gonna move this around here. So, yeah, so then after I wet sand, um, clean it all off with a dry cloth. And then I use a bit of this. along with this. This is a fine grade polishing compound. Um, lacquer thinner sands fairly easy, so you have to watch, you don't burn through. Um, so you use a nice soft cloth. I prefer to do the drums by hand. You can do use the machine if you want, but you risk burning the finish. And uh, even though it's shining really good, um, um, I could probably use a machine on it and buff it and make it look brand new. Don't want that. Uh, I want the vintage 40 year look. So it's shiny. It's beautiful actually. Um, but I did it out of my hand instead. So once you finish with this, I've been using this. This is for plastic parts. Worked fantastic on plastic wrap drums like the Hashino, which is a plastic wrap on it. Obviously these Gretsch are not, but I found that this really buffs up nice and it's uh, a great protector. So what I do is I put this on and I mix it with this product, Meguiar's. Both products I just showed you are Meguiar's. Um, so I'll rub that paste on um, the first one, the plastic uh, polish, uh, and before it hardens I spray the Meguiar's spray pump wax and I kind of blend the two. And by hand I do circles and it just does a fabulous job. Um, always best to try a little spot of a drum just in case it screws up whatever finish you have. I've never had that problem um, and then um, wiped it all down let it sit for a bit and uh, then came back about uh, half an hour later and give it one more soft cloth buffing and you'll be surprised it takes off a little bit more and it just turned out uh, fantastic before I put the lugs on I made sure because these old lugs they have a, a retaining spring inside. Um, what it does is it, where this tension rod threads in, it's a threading uh, tension rod nut. It sits in a couple of grooves in here, but it's made to move and go, um, when you're putting the tension rod in, it's made to adjust a little bit. Think of it as a shock absorber, sort of. So it does move, the spring keeps it in place and uh, locked into the grooves that are inside the lug. The problem with those springs, like I've said many times in videos, is they, they ring um, a frequency and if the eight on top and the eight on the bottom are ringing uh, in a studio, it can be quite annoying. 
So, um, Gretsch, though, um, from the factory, they actually put a square little piece of foam in there. And, uh, and that varies. Like, I've had a 50s kit and it didn't have anything. So you can use a cotton ball. These had little foam squares. They also had some cotton balls um, in between the spring and the shell of the drum. I took those out. You don't need those. I don't know if somebody else put those in. It doesn't. I've never seen a Gretsch kit where they use cotton balls uh, between the shell and the spring. It's always between the spring and the lug wall. You don't want anything touching the shell because it'll stop the shell from vibrating. Um, speaking of the shells, these shells are super thin. I'm not sure the plies, I'm gonna say they're six ply, but really thin, thin ply. And the thinner the drum, the more life it has. Um, I mean, there's some companies like Sonar that make really thick um, walled uh, drum shells, and uh, they say that's the best. So there's always this little you know what is right and what is wrong or what is best and what is not the best um, I've always found that the thinnest shells are the best so I like drums to ring and sing and and make lots of noise I'd rather spend a little bit of time dampening them uh, than have a, jum, a drum that's totally choked ironically the snare drum with this kit which is chrome over brass it's so it's such a heavy drum um, it's it almost has a, a slightly choked sound to it, um, which is kind of cool with the with the drums ringing so much. So that's the video for now. Last thing to do: the bass drum hoops and uh, the bass drum skins. Um, the skins are good on the kit for the bass drum. I put new skins on everything else. The bass drum ones, I'm going to keep them, um, but it's a clear one on the front. So I'm going to do some, some either painted black from the inside and do the Gretsch logo by hand, which I've done quite a few times, in white on the front. And uh, that'll probably take uh, a good day to do, to draw it out and paint it. Okay, long video. But appreciate you watching. It's a, uh, it's coming together nicely, and uh, and it's kind of a, a nice thing. I just got in contact with the original owner's brother, Al. Uh, the more the original owner passed away in November, but his brother just contacted me, uh, and and filled me in on the details on what happened and uh, uh, when he passed away and why, uh, with the health reasons. So um, it's kind of fitting that the floor tom gets done on the, on the same day that uh, Al's brother contacts me. Pretty cool. Thanks, folks.